Sitting Bull requested this council. We await his words. Take your soldiers out of here. They scare the game away. Very well, sir. Tell me, then, how far away should I take my men? You must take them out of our lands. What precisely are your lands? These are the lands where my people lived before you whites first came. I don't understand. We whites were not your first enemies. Why don't you demand back the land in Minnesota where the Chippewa and others forced you from years before? The Black Hills are sacred land given to my people by Wachantonka. By the 1830s, what was known as the Indian problem was a pressing issue in Georgia. During the colonial period, for the most part, associations between the Native Americans and colonial Georgia were cordial. After America's independence, that relationship began to change for the worst. At one time, the land of the Cherokee people spanned what is now eight states in the Southern Appalachians. But from 1721 to 1819, the Cherokees relinquished much of their territory to the burgeoning United States, reducing the size of the Cherokee Nation by over 90 percent. During the 1700s, the Cherokees endured devastating smallpox epidemics and wars with the colonists. After the turn of the century, the Cherokee began to rebuild and transform themselves they would establish a formal government with a police force and a court system. In 1827, the Cherokees wrote a constitution 
and the next year they held a national election. Unlike any other North American tribe, the Cherokee people created their own written alphabet. Invented by a man named Sequoia, it was so ingenious in its design, Cherokees could learn it quickly. Prior to this time, there had not been a written language for any Native American nation. Sequoia spent 12 years developing a writing system known as the syllabi for the Cherokee people. Believing that the secret to the white people's power lay in their written language, Sequoia would travel throughout the Cherokee nation and teach its people how to use his system. As a result, much of the Cherokee soon became literate. Sequoia himself never learned how to speak, read, or write the English language. The preamble of this constitution, making a noticeable resemblance to the Constitution of the United States, goes as follows. We, the representatives of the people of the Cherokee Nation, in convention assembled, in order to establish justice, ensure tranquility, promote our common welfare, and secure to ourselves our prosperity, the blessings of liberty. Furthermore, the Cherokee Constitution followed an outline that was marked by various articles and sections detailing the workings of their government, which, like their Constitution, would also be modeled after that of the United States. Then, in 1829, Southern congressmen introduced the Indian Removal Act into Congress. The bill called for the removal of all five Southern tribes, the Cherokees, the Choctaws, the Creeks, the Chickasaws, and the Seminoles to territories west of the Mississippi. By 1860, most of the Indian population which remained east of the Mississippi had come to treaty terms with the United States. Many were long gone to epidemics and years of conflict with their neighbors and with Europeans becoming Americans. In the north, most were confined to reservations a fraction of the size of their original homelands. Others, particularly in the south, had been removed beyond the Mississippi, leaving behind only intractable remnants of their people high in the hills of Carolina or deep in the Florida swamps. It was in the west where the war's effects were first felt and most profoundly. I wish to be remembered that I was the last man of my tribe to surrender my rifle. At the age of 14, I went with a party of warriors to search for crow horses and scalps. We attacked the crow braves, and I counted my first coup. I was no longer called slow. I was given the name of the Tonka Ayotonka, or Sitting Bull. Like a buffalo sitting on its haunches, I would fight to the death. We knew the soldiers were coming. But we did not want to fight if we could do otherwise. I took with me my young son, Crowfoot, who carried my rifle. And I told Brotherton, I surrender this rifle to you through my young son. I wish him to learn the habits of the whites and to be educated as their sons are educated. I wish to be remembered that I was the last man of my tribe to surrender my rifle. I wore a full eagle feather bonnet and a buckskin tunic with cool work decoration. When reporters asked me how I liked my travels, I said to them, I have had much pleasure but I am very tired. There's a great difference between prairie travel on horse and foot and that of the wagons drawn by the iron horse. People had been very kind to me. I believe they knew why I held all my people to starve when we were in Canada rather than to submit to what was wrong. I did not understand the ways of the white man. I have seen the villages where they lived, and I had seen the people in the streets begging for money because they were hungry. And they called themselves civilized and us savages. <laughs> <laughs>